Hello there, Master Hellish here and welcome back to Hellish in the Kitchen. Today we'll be doing some treats for Halloween. Now inspired by a video I watched by Cherry Wallace, she recently went and made some apples with chocolate, some treaty apple chocolate sticky things. Well, it's all very good and well for Cherry, but it's no good for me because I'm allergic to apple. So we won't be doing that. We'll be doing alternatives. We need some alternatives to apples. Something different, something fresh. So, first things first, we need some chocolate. I've got a bit of water in some pan. We'll get it on the heat. We'll max that out on the heat there. And I'll get a bowl for the chocolate. Right, I've got cheap chocolate because I actually quite like the taste of it, and this is the same stuff that I use for my giant Jaffa cake. You don't have to use dark chocolate, you can use any kind of chocolate you like that hasn't got like nuts and stuff in it, because that's what kids want with their chocolate, isn't it? Fruit and, and nut and stuff. What were they thinking? What were they actually thinking? Anyway, this can only really go wrong one or two ways. One involves Paul. Hello, Paul. And the other one is, is if you get water in with your chocolate. If you use a wet bowl or a bowl that's got any damp in it, or you get water spilling over from your pan, that's when chocolate melts and go horribly wrong. Keep it dry, keep stirring it, you'll be fine. But it takes a little while. Bear with me. The chocolate goes on the boiling pan, which as soon as it's boiling, we can bring the heat down and pop the bowl in. Well, that needs to bubble away for a while, so we'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, so I've been stirring the chocolate around in this bowl now for about ooh, three or four minutes, and there's no lumps in it, which means it's time to do the interesting part. So, we're gonna need a tray. There we go, nice big tray. Uh, and it probably is going to stick to that, so uh, some greaseproof paper is best. Now, if you don't have greaseproof paper, you can use foil or cling film, but to be honest, this is best. Now, as always, when using greaseproof paper, there is that trick to stick it, and that is get a bit of water on your hand, rub it on the greaseproof paper and then it will stick nicely down to the surface you're working on and it won't fly away and it should stay relatively still. Brilliant. So now, what can we do instead of apples? Well, instead of apples you can do bananas, strawberries, oranges, basically any fruits can go on to chocolate and taste fantastic. But that's a bit boring, we want to step it up a notch. Now very often you get marshmallows at around this time of year. Some places have them all year round. So I decided we're going to do some of these. So, going to get some of these and we'll get some cocktail sticks. Now I haven't got any cocktail sticks so I've had to improvise and I've got some paintbrushes. But if you just pop a marshmallow onto your cocktail stick, dunk it in, swizzle it round. There you are. If you want and you're gonna be using cocktail sticks, you can put something like a potato or an apple, if you know, onto your baking tray, maybe cut it in half, and then you can wedge your cocktail stick into it. And that way, you've got a nice little thing for the malt to stand on. But I haven't got that, so I'm just gonna put it directly on to the greaseproof paper. Yeah. Not for too long though, and keeping the temperature as low as possible. In fact, once it's melted, you can probably just turn it off. And there you are, nicely done chocolate marshmallows. We want to do something more beyond that. Another idea you could do is you could get some little cake cup things and you could get some cereal. These flakes of corn are a popular choice with chocolate. Now, if you don't want to make a massive batch and get chocolate everywhere, there's another way to do it. You put your corn into your cup and then spoon some chocolate in and just give it a mix around. Smash it around a bit, 
the chocolate will seep through to a point because it's nice and melty and bam chocolate treat there another great idea but we don't want to stop there you can do all sorts with this cereal stuff what about these wheat things these seem like a good idea let's get one of these right i like these smell good dump that in there as well give it a good wiggle round there we go and of course because these are healthy it, it must mean that this is good for you i, I would have thought you know there we go just wipe off the bottom and we got a wheaty thing on there as well well as well as wheaty things you can have like these snack things what are these rice cakes oh a polystyrene i mean it's perfect for chocolate so salt and vinegar and chocolate must go well together so in that goes as well I'm going to coat half of it up and just slap it onto the onto the sheet there and that'll peel off great. What else have we got? Well, I love Battenberg and to be honest, I used to think the only way that Battenberg could be improved was by having two Battenbergs, but not anymore. Oh no. Get yourself a good slice of Battenberg or any sort of your favourite cake and lop it in there as well. I'll get the little spoon out. So let's get that onto the tray as well. Battenberg chocolate. Brilliant idea. And also, even better, it doesn't have to be solid stuff. You can get liquid things like yogurt and stuff like that. Put it in some sort of mold. These are just ice cube molds. Put it in your mold whack it in the freezer and once it's set you can take your frozen yogurt out out to the mold mm. right so drop that into the hot chocolate quickly get it out of there and onto your greaseproof paper now that chocolate is going to melt the inside and it won't work very well but what you do is you take that and you put it back into the freezer very quickly for just a few seconds to harden that chocolate off and then you'll have a chocolate with a liquid or soft centre. Easy way of doing it. Well I'm going to finish these off and let's have a look at the final products. So it's time to find out what these are like. I'm going to score them out of 10 as to how brilliant they are. If they're 10, they're totally fantastic. Anything less than five is probably not worth recommending you trying either. So um, these are a little bit sticky still. These are four. So first things first, I think the safer ones, the marshmallows, uh, still, like I said, a bit gooey. Uh, mm. That's good. Mm, I like the chocolate. Um, I think I'm going to have to give that a nine. It's very a bit chewy all to eat in one go. And I bet if you bit in it, it'd fall apart. But good nonetheless. And of course, the common corn flaky chocolate thing I'm not going to try and lift the whole thing out because like I said it's not 100% set it's a bit warm in here today hmm. it's a good old favourite of mine I'm going to give that a 9 as well and then my first major experiment chocolate Battenberg now this I've been looking forward to I love Battenberg and I quite love chocolate too so uh, let's see what this is like. Mm. Well, it's probably against the rules. I'm going to give that 15. That's brilliant. If you like Battenberg, 
Go get one, slice it up, smother it in chocolate, enjoy. I've got the weepy thing here. Normally okay in cereal, but uh, let's try it with the bit of chocolate. Well, <laughs> I must admit, that's very different without milk and that. Um, it's like getting poked with a thousand blunt needles within my mouth. I must admit, probably not the best of treats. However, flavour-wise, it is fine. Practicality and our natural texture let it down slightly. We're going to give that a five. Uh, let's move on now to the polystyrene, I mean, not polystyrene, I mean the uh, rice cakey thing. This one is another one I've been looking forward to. The only thing that I think might put me off is I chose salt and vinegar to do it with, which could be interesting. So let's uh, tell you what. Salt and vinegar, rice cake and chocolate. Oh, that's good, that. That's, that's, that's the surprise of the bunch. I knew that the... Uh, the Batsenberg, I'm pretty sure that was going to be awesome. Rice cap, I like it. I'm going to give that a seven. I mean, it's not fantastic, like, you know, the others, but that's a nice surprise. And I've thrown in an extra one here. Here I have a chocolate fish finger. I do like fish fingers, but normally with ketchup in sandwiches. Um, so uh, let's see what that's like, eh? Fishy, chocolatey, surprisingly edible. I don't think I would recommend that one, but it doesn't taste disgusting either, which is a big surprise. I'll give it a four. Um, not great, but I'm not going to vomit, which is great. I kind of experimented with the liquids. Uh, now the ones that I think should be fine are the yoghurt ones, the ones I suggested. But there's a couple of other different surprise ones here. Oh, it's that set quite nicely. These remember, these ones have been in the freezer for a little while, then moved to a fridge. And remember, normally you shouldn't put chocolate in the fridge. It attracts all the smells of the other food, makes the chocolate taste funny. But here we go. Oh! Hmm. Oh my, hang on. Look at that. Amazing. That yogurt is still ever so slightly frozen. It tastes nice, the chocolate's nice. A little bit of melt in the hands. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give that an eight. That, that's good, I like that. Mm. Cold though. Mm. Mm. Cold, 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 cold. No, the only ones are left are the mysterious ones that I just threw in there to try. Now, these ones down here um, look like they've leaked, so I'm not sure it's worked out as well as the yogurt ones, but um, I'm going to give it a bit of a taste anyway. Mm. Brown sauce. I like brown sauce. I like chocolate. But the two do not go well together. That's getting zero. Nothing. It, nah, that's horrible. And the last remaining one is this. And inside this, I have placed tomato soup. One of my staples for lunch. And I, I don't know, I don't want to bite into it and to go everywhere. So first of all, I'm gonna stab it with the fork, just so we can see what it's like on the inside. Uh, it's a good job I did that on the plate because that just exploded. But I'm going to take a piece. Mm. That. I thought that was going to be the worst one of them all. But it's not. Um, it's totally edible. I mean, it's not. It's not nice and tasty like the marshmallows or the other bits, but it's not disgusting either, like I thought it would be. Well, there we have it. Um, a few experiments, alternatives to things you can dunk in apart from apples and other fruit. Let me know what you would like to dunk in chocolate and if you've tried it and whether it really panned out. 
Let me know if you've tried any of this as well. It would be quite interesting. And to be honest, these ones here, these frozen ones with the stuff inside, if you manage to freeze some items nice and tight in some small ice cube trays, get them in the chocolate, get them all lined up, you can actually have a nice party game of guessing what's on the inside when popping them in people's mouths. Just use edible stuff. Um, but everything I tried today was, was actually edible and I did no vomiting. So on that fantastic note, I'd like to leave it there. Uh, remember, put all your comments in with anything you've tried. But that's all from me for now and until I see you next time, happy Halloween, goodbye.